Hey everyone, welcome back to Call to the Pen as part of the Hammer Betting Network. This is the baseball division and we are going to be talking baseball today. It's been a while uh, spread since we last discussed some MLB uh, futures and MLB stuff and we've had a few weeks of spring training since then. So I'm ready to just dive right into it. Um, I'm Alex Moretto. I'll be hosting this one. I'm joined by Jason Weingarten, better known as Spreadopedia. And uh, yeah, man, we're... Uh, we're into the thickest spring training right now. We got about a little over a week to go, depending on when you're watching this to opening day. We've had some incredible baseball already this year, obviously with the world baseball classic, but um, spring training, there's been a lot of stuff so far, a lot of interesting storylines, a lot of things that have kind of stood out to me. So I'm excited to kind of get your thoughts on some of this stuff. Uh, Jordan Walker obviously was one of the big storylines so far. He's had a great spring. He's really like smacking the cover off the ball so far. Market sort of reacted to that though. That's been talked about a bunch. We've seen his rookie of the year odds sort of move from uh, around nine to one at open to about four to one now in most shops, three to one at Superbook. Um, yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on uh, the spring, the spring that Walker's had, and uh, any other guys that have sort of stood out to you uh, so far? I'd probably say Walker is a favorite to make the Cardinals at this point, um, especially with the, the competition for bats at DH with Juan Yepes. Uh, last I saw yesterday, Yepes is hitting uh, two, 213. So Yeah, he's hitting under his weight for sure. I just don't see, you know, a very smart, analytically driven franchise saying we're going to send Walker to AAA for a month to keep Juan Yepes so he can get at bats. Like, I just don't see it. Um, mm -hmm. I make him a favorite to, to make the team, but, you know, it, nothing's been confirmed yet. That's just my speculation. And the way this line has gone now, like, it's been basically slashed in half, if not more. Um, I'm not rushing to bet it at this price either. I'm no. Gonna um, I'm not going to take all the credit for crashing that price, but I'm not going to not take any credit for it either. <laughs> well, we talked um, about this on the last episode, right? We both talked about Jordan Walker as a guy that we liked for the, for the rookie of the year. So like, if, I mean, if people watch that, hopefully you got in at these prices, but like four to one, three to one. Now I have no interest in this. And like, I, how far do you think it falls if he is announced uh, as, you know, on the opening day roster, do you think we even get to like Gunnar Henderson plus 250, even plus 200 range? Possibly, but you know you got to keep in mind there's other guys. Um, Corbin Carroll being one of the big ones. Miguel yeah. Vargas on the Dodgers. It's it's not a one horse race. Uh, you still got to go out there and produce. There are several several other players, both in the AL and the NL, that will have early opportunities to, you know, get into the market and and make themselves favorites. Yeah, I wanted to talk about some of those guys because Walker has gotten all the publicity this spring and the way he's hitting the ball, it makes sense. You know, the prospect pedigree, everything is fantastic surrounding him, but there are a few other guys who are hitting the ball just as well, not really getting that recognition or not really getting that love. Um, Anthony Volpe is one for me. The thing with him though, is he's probably not like he's, I think he's got an outside chance of making the opening day roster, but I think with Peraza there, they're probably going to stick with Peraza at shortstop. Volpe will probably more realistically be with the team, maybe in like early to mid May. Um, but Man, he's having a hell of a spring. Fifth best OPS, uh, you know, 990. Uh, he's got a couple homers, 4-4 four four on stolen bases. The playing time is obviously a little murky, so maybe at 10-1, to 1, like, I'm not rushing to bet it, but something I want to keep an eye on if he does, you know, get announced on the opening day lineup, um, opening day roster, or if he gets called up at one point, you're going to want to rush to bet that pretty quickly. Uh, Tristan Cassess is another one. He's been hitting the ball really well. Uh, Brett Batty's been hitting the ball really well. Cassis is definitely going to be on the opening day roster. He's going to be in that opening day lineup uh, for the Red Sox. And he's, you know, he's got a really impressive slash line. He's got a bit of power this spring. Um, clear path to playing time. Batty, not so much. Uh, I mean, I think he will be. He's hitting the ball really. He's doing everything he can in spring right now to get on that opening day roster. Well, while Eduardo Escobar is basically just sort of, he was at the World Baseball Classic. He's not really been around the team. I think Batty has a good chance to be in there. And I mean, the difference is Cassis, you're getting at like nine or 10 to one. Whereas, you know, Batty, you're getting like 39 to one at Penny, uh, 30 to one at Superbook. I mean, those are some pretty long prices. If you want to kind of take a flyer on someone right now, if you're still looking for some value, Batty is someone who maybe stands out. I don't know what your thoughts are on those guys. Yeah. I mean, Batty, when I look at the list, I see guys with lower odds in front of him who have like 0% chances. So, you know, definitely 
worth considering. He's not not a guy I've bet yet, um, mainly because I bet a lot of Jordan Walker early, and I mm-hmm. just don't feel the need to to add much at this point. Um, Casas, one of my friends really likes him a lot, but his his problem is he's also got Masataka Yoshida, yeah, who's been playing really well in the WBC. If this carries over to the regular season, we'll definitely see a situation like Saya Suzuki last year where he's an odds on favorite pretty early. Although, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to put the cart before the horse and say he's going to win. We have seen a lot of these recent Japanese import players not produce rookie seasons well enough to, to compete. And, you know, then we see Shohei Otani. So, so who knows where, what side of that, that coin he's going to end up on uh, Volpe. I like him. I don't like him at seven and a half to one. I like him, you know, at like 15 or 20. Um, being the shortstop in New York's always gonna yeah. kind of get you a bump in in the headlines and attention paid to you and everything. And you know, it's a uh, it's it's not such a deep class to start. I think there have been more competitive uh rookie of the year classes, but uh when you look, you know, when you look at the the top of the board, I think this is the kind of year. Like you look at the the AL and you got Gunnar Henderson, Yoshida, Volpe, and Casas under ten to one. Like your winner probably comes from that group. Mm-hmm. In the NL, you got Corbin Carroll, Jordan Walker, Miguel Vargas. You know, would you take those three guys versus the field? Like I probably would. Um, there's some other contenders, but to start the year, it's it's pretty top heavy. Yeah, and I think some of the other contenders like. I mean, we talked about this last one where Strider did about everything you could as a rookie pitcher last year and didn't win the award. So it's kind of tough to get on a guy like Kodai Senga or uh, even like someone who's been rising quite a bit and Brandon Fat from the uh, from the Diamondbacks. I can't, I don't love those. Um, but going back to Volpe for a second, if he, so you can get some like 10 to one, maybe 10 to one is like kind of the best price I think I've seen in market right now. If he is announced to be, on the opening day roster and he does have a line of spot are you going to be quick to bet that is does that change your opinion of him at this price is if uh, if he's guaranteed that roster spot on opening day the only reason i would bet him is because i don't want him to beat me um you know i think the way i bet futures is you have to be okay with certain players you know you can't have everybody so mm-hmm. you know like last year I bet my AL Cy Youngs, and I said, if Justin Verlander is going to beat me, Justin Verlander is going to beat me. And he came back from Cy Young surgery and had an amazing season and beat me. So, you know, sometimes you just have to be all right with with losing and, and knowing that, you know, you're not going to have every horse in a race. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, he's just the kind of guy that I would hate to have a position like I do on Gunnar Henderson at like five to one or four to one and, you know, double the market price and you could have a really good season and finish second with comparable stats just because he plays in New York. Like I would like to avoid a situation like that, but otherwise, like, am I betting on Volpe because I like him? No, I'm betting on him because I don't want the shortstop from New York to beat me. Right. One one more guy I wanted to talk about. I'm not sure you're going to be on the same side as me here in terms of, you know, liking this player, or liking what he's done so far. Um, and I'm not betting him right now, but he's someone I just want to, like, throw out there to keep an eye on because, it, again, it's the it's the Yankees thing um, and, you know, playing in that market and, you know, a guy with the power and the pedigree. But it's Jason Dominguez. So the spring he's having – is kind of unbelievable. This is a guy who was like once the most t- highly touted prospect, right? In uh in baseball at like 16 years old. They were calling him the next Mike Trout. Like it's kind of a lot to live up to. Still hasn't made his MLB debut. Feels like he's been around forever. Still just 20 years old. Um he's got an unbelievable bat. And he kind of, you know, over the last 4 years, he's kind of dipped a little bit. Um his stock maybe wasn't as high. Maybe that's a little bit of like prospect fatigue too. But this spring, four home runs in 22 at bats, nine RBIs, batting 455, 520 OBP, uh, 1,565 OPS, uh, even as a stolen base. The path to playing time is very difficult. He's still 20 years old. It's hard to see him getting in there anytime before, like maybe even the all-star break. That being said, 
there's an outside chance when you consider like Stanton and Hicks are far from health guarantees. They both battled injuries in the past. Ritzel's back's already bothering him. Donaldson's struggling a lot at the plate. Cabrera and Calhoun, those aren't guys that are going to kind of block him necessarily. So no matter what, he's not making the opening day roster. He's not going to be in there anytime soon. But like maybe some injuries, I mean, you don't want to say break right because you don't want to root for guys to get hurt. But like if some injuries happen and he gets up there in May, he's not even listed at some spots. Other spots, you can get him like 60 to 1, 71, 80 to 1. Um, I mean, I think that's someone who's worth monitoring at least. And like if you can be quick to react to any news that comes about here, if he were to get called up suddenly, like does that interest you at all? I mean, you said he's not making the opening day roster. Is he yeah. still even in Major League Camp at this point? Uh, I don't believe he is. Yeah, so, I mean, teams kind of telegraph to you their intentions. Mm-hmm. And if he's not even in the Major League Camp at this point, you know, like, if you want to bet 100 bucks on him or something just to have the ticket, you're not really getting a – you're getting a nice flyer at 100 to 1. I see 100 to 1 at DraftKings right now. Um I but like take a hundred dollars anyways, but that's a whole other but yeah, story. <laughs> but like would I take would I take a big position on him at a big number? Probably not, especially like you said, you know, May as a potential trajectory, I would say August or September is more realistic, mm-hmm. even in a you know, in the most favorable situations, you you're likely gonna see the the Yankees give it bats to a veteran free agent or somebody in Triple A. Um, although I don't actually know is Dominguez going to start in Triple A? Is he going to start in Double A? I'm um, not sure. I'm still trying you to can obviously jump actually... from du- Yeah. No, go ahead. You can jump from Double A straight to the majors. It's not unheard of. Julio Rodriguez did it. Uh, Jordan Walker might do it. But you're really asking a lot of him, putting a lot on a 20 year old shoulders and. He's a high strikeout guy anyway, so I'd expect those strikeouts to increase if he got aggressively promoted to the majors. Um, all that's to say that if he's not in Major League Camp at this point, I would probably just wait a little bit because, um, you know, that 100 to 1 could easily drift out to 200 to 1 yeah. in a couple weeks. And then you can, you know, bet as much as you want on it or whatever. Yeah, no, agreed. That's what I think. That's more of a guy to monitor than a guy you want to bet now, because it's guaranteed he's not going to be playing for the first month or so of the season. But so I, have I've, to- I've, the last couple seasons, I've done this. Like last season, I bet Yuri Perez, right, at like a hundred to one or whatever. He didn't sniff the major leagues. It was a wasted ticket. Um, two years ago, I bet Jared Kelnick. He didn't come up the entire year or whatever the 2020 season. Mm -hmm. Um, In the past, I have taken long shots on guys. Jack Leiter being another one last year at a huge number. Um, So I've tried to stay away from that just because, you know, like I do want to be covered in the event of something extraordinary happening, but um, trying to focus more on getting more money down on, on, you know, smaller amount of players than peppering the board with, you know, you want a thousand dollars on one guy, or you want a hundred dollars on ten guys, sort of. Yeah, and especially as we talked about, like this year is at the top of those, uh, at the top of the NL and AL odds boards. Like you have a lot of really good, really talented players that are going to be basically playing from day one. So it's going to be that much harder for one of these long shots to kind of crack their way into the uh, the top of the odds board, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, someone will do it. I just don't know who off the top of my head, but but there's always one guy. You know, yeah. Spencer Strider last year was and Michael Harris too. Unheard of, Mike. Oh, I knew Michael Harris. I but got like he wasn't, but he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't like uh, you know among the top twenty. You know, or no, he wasn't projected. He wasn't expected close. to to get called up, and yeah. then they they decided he did, he came straight from Double A too. Mm-hmm. Um, I I actually requested him at at Caesars. I waited almost a whole week after he got called up, expecting them to put the number out. And no one right. did it. So I finally asked them and they opened it like 85 to one to their credit and took a took a big bet on it. So um, hat tip to them, I guess, for nice. uh, making my my year and getting me out of the Shohei Otani hole. <laughs> I did the same thing with uh, with Josh Lowe last year when at like 100 to one everywhere when it was announced that he would be making the. Yeah, I got it. I was in I was in Vegas. Were you in Vegas for Bet Bash? I was not. I was not. I went I walked across the street to the plaza to try to kiosk jam a, a Will Hill 
for a hundred bucks over and over on Josh Lowe and kiosk didn't work. I was very frustrated. I was like, I'm leaving all this value. And, you know, I actually have a Josh Lowe card right behind me here. Mm -hmm. Um, pretty useless to yeah all, yeah all those tickets are just toilet paper but yeah you know exactly that's what you do out. you find a guy yeah. like that he he could have won i mean they you know he's a good player kind of had the opportunity that's all you yeah, want is find that's guys all, yeah that's all you can ask for right he had the opportunity yeah. i mean he got all the way down to like 20 to 1 in some places after you know um like early in the season i mean hey you're holding 100 to 1 ticket he has the opportunity you've got some pretty good value there didn't work out yeah but doesn't always work out, but you know, I'd make can't that hit high again. fastballs. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Moving from players at, to teams here, are there any teams that like have stood out to you so far or uh, either like, you know, you don't want to overreact to spring training stats, right. But like any teams that have kind of been impressing you or disappointing you so far this spring that you're looking to maybe uh, change your opinion on so far uh, uh, going into the season or, or you kind of not try and put too much into into spring performances. I think the Dodgers have some question marks with their depth. Um, you know, like is Jason Hayward really going to start 100 plus games for them in the outfield? Is Miguel Rojas really the starting set, th uh, shortstop for the Dodgers? Um, some questions out of the pen and the back of the rotation. Who who are the rookies that are going to contribute? Um, you know, I think. I don't think the Dodgers necessarily are going to have a bad year, but there are certainly question marks on the depth of the team going into the season. But then again, it's sort of like uh, Team USA. You just have to remember that Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts are at the top of the lineup. So that's always going to carry you through your, your question marks. Um, so I'm not super worried about them. I watch a lot of Florida spring training, or at least I follow the Florida spring training closer than Arizona. Um, I like spring training for the for the reason that the, the games are early in the morning on mm -hmm. the West Coast. So I can get up, make some bets, watch some baseball from Florida, get on with my day. Um, it's great. But uh, I watch a lot of Marlins games which is not something I recommend for anybody that's not insane. But uh, the Marlins are bad. They're just bad. They can't hit the ball right now. And it's kind of, are they just going to start hitting the ball when the regular season starts? They have Johnny Cueto as their third starter. Question marks in the bullpen. You know, Garrett Cooper is their cleanup hitter. And yeah, Garrett Cooper is a fine baseball player, but... They have no no depth on the bench. Um, the the back of the lineup five through nine is just a bunch of you know low paid veterans. Nothing really stands out to me as a seventy five win team when I look at this team and this roster and this organization and their commitment to winning. And I just don't see it. And then I I see that Fangraphs is projecting like eighty wins and. I really need somebody to walk me through these calculations and tell me what I'm missing because, you know, Fangraph sees 70, Fangraph sees 80, the market sees 76 to 75 wins on the win totals, and I see 70. So, you know, I've bet it. When when you think the market is wrong, you bet it, and I have bet it. I've, you know, bet it pretty, pretty big and not the biggest bet in the world or anything, but um, bet it a couple times, a couple different places. And, told a bunch of people i like it um yeah tell me why i'm wrong i mean i don't think you're wrong um like they're was... gonna have to really outperform every metric and get some super positive variance yeah to, to get need, these like, projections everything has to break right for them like the optimal season in terms of like player performances and everything like a full season from Chisholm, um, a full season from Arias, you know, Arias needs to continue his trajectory and like maybe even take the next step. Chisholm has to play a full season and continue his trajectory. They need Soler to get back to the kind of the player he once was. Um, Abisael, who I think is kind of just done at this point, they need him to sort of step up a little bit. For me though, it comes down to their pitching, right? Like if they have Sandy being Sandy, if Luzardo, who like I have, 
question marks about him. He could be unbelievable, but like, I mean, to would I bank on that? No. But like, if Luzardo ends up, you know, hitting his ceiling, maybe Yuri Perez comes in and uh, and you know contributes in the rotation. Trevor Rogers gets back to being Trevor Rogers the, of like two years ago. Um, I mean, Edward Cabrera is another nice young arm. They basically have to like have all these young pitchers be as good as they can be and like you know hit the peak of their uh their range of outcomes this year and i think even then with their hitting they're still like at best a 500 team yeah i mean that's what i see i see a 500 team i see a team with an incentive to trade players and you yeah know, get rid of veterans um i just don't see like if you're really telling me johnny cueto's your third starter and yeah, I got to look at like the projections, how many innings they expect him to throw. But if you're asking like 150 innings out of Johnny Cueto. I'm going to tell you you're a 70 win team. Yeah, so, I think I'm pretty sure Fangraphs had him for over 150 innings. That's insane. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you think you're going to get 150 innings of four ERA baseball out of Cueto, like it's a good deal. You know, mm-hmm. a four ERA pitcher for whatever he's getting paid is, is probably reasonable. But I have my doubts. You know, he's going to have to face the Phillies and the Mets and the, the the Braves, you know, like not not easy. He's, he's not going to get a bunch of easy games. And there's only so many times you could play the uh, the Nationals. Yeah. I mean, although this year with the new schedule, you are playing your division a little bit less. So maybe that helps them to an extent. You get like more games against the rest of the league, less against that gauntlet of a a division. But like you're still playing them more so than you're playing other teams. Like it still matters. Um, I think they projected like 140 innings, too, from Luzardo. I don't see how you can bank on that. He's done nothing to show that he can pitch that many innings or stay healthy for that long or pitch that many effectively. So, yeah, I just think like considering all the young players they have, maybe the range of outcomes is wide for the Marlins, but the like vast majority of the likeliest outcomes are all in that under 76 and a half. That's what you're saying. 76 and a half you got, right? I think, yeah, I think they're all kind of under, uh, under that range. Um, A team on the opposite end of the spectrum who I've actually been impressed with this spring, which is, a little bit concerning to me because I did bet their uh, win total under 82 and a half is the Texas Rangers. Um, I thought the hype was too much. I thought that adjustment uh, up to 82 and a half wins was too much, just kind of a inflated total based on the off season they've had. But like now all of a sudden, I mean, DeGrom made his, his debut. He looks healthy. Perez pitching fairly well at the world baseball classic. I, I can't quite quit John Gray. I think he's still a, pretty effective pitcher who will, you know, give you a lot of innings and decently effective innings. Um, you know, Baldi's had a good spring, you know, Heaney is your fifth starter. You could do a lot worse. And then for me, it's the lineup where like the back half of the lineup, similar to the Marlins, I was like, well, wow, this is just like, I mean, a bunch of aging veterans on, you know, cheap deals. And, but you're looking at some of these guys now, like, you know, Robbie Grossman is, pounding the ball this spring somehow um jonah heim the catcher is doing you know having a nice spring uh josh jung is you know is looking like the prospect he wants the you know the highly touted prospect he once was josh smith's hitting the ball pretty well and then you have the top you know part of the order guys like seager low and adolis who are doing their thing i mean seager's batting like 455 i think the no shift will help him a lot so like I don't know. I think that division in the AL West is incredibly tough, obviously. And I think that they're still a shade below the, you know, the Angels, the Mariners and the Astros, without a doubt, um, all three of them. But like, I'm less bullish on being down on the Rangers than I was before. I don't know if you have any opinions on this team at all. What I don't mind about the Rangers is that Chris Young, the the baseball VP ops, whatever GM, I don't actually know his title off the top of my head. Um, but Chris Young came from the Dodgers organization, so he understands what you need to do to build a team. And if you look at their roster the last year or two, they anytime Dodgers put somebody on waivers, they basically claim them and you know run them through the system, see if there's anything there. Um, but you know they signed Corey Seager. They obviously knew a lot about him before uh, you know from from the LA um, regime and everything. But uh, I love Seager. He's the kind of guy, um, a lot of my futures betting, a lot of my my stuff is that I have my guys. You know, like Shohei Otani, I didn't 
just bet him in 2021. I actually bet him in 2020 because I thought the short season was actually a better situation for Otani because, you know, they played what I don't know they played 50 games or something. It was the short season was so short that, that theoretically Otani could have put up astronomical numbers compared to everybody else over, you know, a small window. And then he went out and gave up six earned runs in the first game of the season. And it was like the worst bet I ever made. Um, but I went back to the well the next year. Um, I frequently, you know, like I've bet Corey Seager several years in a row for MVP. Am, am I going to not bet him this year? I haven't bet him yet. Um, but I saw he had like an 11 game hit streak going and he's, he's the kind of guy. I mean, he can hit 40 home runs. He can, he can be up there near the top of the board. He's destroying um, the ball this spring. He is. Yeah. I love him. And that's the it. thing is it's, he had a back injury. Sometimes back yeah. injuries take one, two, multiple years to, to get back. You know, Nick Markakis lost all his power and never, never came back. He played baseball several years after his back injury, but never regained the power he had afterwards. Um, so you never know. Backs are a real tricky thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it takes time and maybe, maybe he's fully healthy and, uh, we finally get, you know, he gets the best season of his career. So he's well uh, protected in that lineup too. Yeah. He's got guys around him. It's good, good situation. You know, if you're looking for, for flyers in the AL, you could do worse than Corey Seager, um, Corey Seager, DeGrom. You know, if you're going to build a core around some veterans like that, that's a nice place to start. They're obviously committed to winning. You know, you mm -hmm. can't argue and say that this is a franchise that's not committed to going out and competing <clears throat> when they've gone out and signed Marcus Semyon and uh, Corey Seager and Jacob DeGrom. And, you know, I mean, that's that's just, you know, if you want to compete, they go out and sign some good players. That's That's the way to go. Obviously, a lot of things still have to break their way to to compete in a very, very uh, you know challenging division that starts with the Astros and doesn't get much easier, you know, with Seattle and <clears throat> Anaheim, and it's it's similarly like the the NL East where everyone gets to beat up on the A's here, everyone gets to beat up on the Nationals. So unfortunate for those two teams that they are stuck in divisions with with other teams that are, you know a different different part of the win cycle right now but uh yeah i don't know i think i think the rangers are probably a team you're looking like a, to make the playoff bet over a, to win the division a bet but uh mm -hmm. yeah they're they're definitely on on the upswing for me it's i mean i'm on the under on their win total at 82 and a half uh it's a situation where like you know what i'll pay to see it um i think i have them a little bit under 80 wins this year and 82 and a half you know, I had to take the under there. I like that. And uh, I mean, can DeGrom, if DeGrom stays healthy for a whole year and, you know, Seager overcomes all his back issues and he's, you know, back to Corey Seager again. And, you know, Nate Lowe continues to perform like uh, like he had, like he did last year and continues that trajectory. Then, yeah, I'm probably looking at a loser. But I again, it's one of those things where I think a lot has to still break right for them. Obviously, they're committed to winning, but I still think there are a lot of variables there. And, uh, you know, over 82 and a half, I just can't get on board with that. I think you still you're banking on too many variables breaking, breaking their way. So yeah, that, that's kind of my, that was kind of my logic there. And uh, don't feel as good about it as I did maybe um, before spring started, just based on how things have played out for them so far. But again, if I had to bet it one way or the other right now, I'm still, uh, I'm still sticking with a, an under 82 and a half. Yeah. I mean, 82 is probably around what, what they're going to win. You know, they can, they can out, out hit that a couple, couple games and come up a couple games short. It's, I don't know what side I'd be on. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, okay, we'll uh, we'll end this quickly here. I just want to. Uh, I know people want to hear picks all the time, so I'll I'll try and end this off with some picks. And I know we talked about win totals and how you haven't actually bet many yet, aside from the Marlins. So Marlins under seventy six and a half is what uh, is what you're giving out here. And I will then instead I'll give out uh, a few that I've bet so far, and you can just sort of throw me your thoughts on them and uh and what you think about any of these if you have any leans one way or the other or uh you know any strong opinions on these teams so twins are a big one for me um i got some 80 and a half there was some 80 and a half on open in a few different spots it's mostly around 82 and a half or 83 and a half right now i'm still comfortable betting over 82 and a half um i think that this 
lineup is severely uh, sorry not the lineup I think this rotation is severely underrated I really like the addition of Pablo Lopez um, you know Molly is a guy who doesn't get a ton of respect but he can eat a lot of innings and he's a very effective pitcher um, you know Maeda is your fifth starter like you got Sonny Gray in there uh, Joe Ryan you got guys like Bailey Ober who are uh, and Cole Sands were able to come up from AAA like they're really deep the rotation's really deep last year they were just obliterated by injuries they were on pace to get to like you know the high 80s and the wins they were obliterated by injuries they didn't have the depth i thought i think they brought in some good guys uh you know to sort of give them that protection now um in the lineup if you know guys like boxing go down uh if guys like you know kirillov go down again or whatever so i just think that we're still too low on the twins i also best in division futures plus 350 plus 300 most of those are gone now i think they're like 250 ish across the board but uh there might still be some hanging around that's the team I'm high on. Uh, any thoughts on the Twins in the AL Central? 80-82 is probably about where they're they're going to be headed in that division. Depends, you know that 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 division tends to have like one team that'll underperform all year. And not saying it's going to be the Twins, but it's you know usually mm-hmm. the White Sox or something. Um, I I didn't I haven't bet like I said I haven't bet much win totals yet, but I don't I don't have a problem with taking that over. I think it's. Uh, it's probably, you know, like you said, they have a pretty deep pitching staff and, you know, a pretty smart organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the floor is pretty high there and the uh, and the ceiling is, you know, is pretty high as well. So it's kind of the logic behind that. Um, you talked about the White Sox. White Sox were a team I went under on. I went under 84 and a half. I bet under 83 and a half. I'm still, I just can't buy in. Um, I'm not necessarily buying into a Giolito bounce back. Uh, I like Lynn, but like, the rotation still doesn't quite have the depth. Cease is like a guy who maybe puts up some exciting counting stats. I don't necessarily know that the ERA and the whip are, uh, are all that great. You know, um, I'm just as him as your number one. I think there's still a lot of uh, variance behind him. I just can't buy into this White Sox team. I just, I mean, is, is Robert going to finally stay healthy? Uh, ben Intendi, you know, batting in the three hole, not a huge fan of that. Um, you know, lower end of their lineup is pretty weak. Grandal is, is pretty much at the end of his career here. It seems like Elvis Andrus still, you know, starting second baseman. I'm just, I don't know. Are you buying a white side? I know a lot of people talk about the change in manager and how maybe that's going to change the vibes in the clubhouse. And now they're, you know, going to be back to the White Sox we expected last year. I don't see it. Is that something you're kind of buying into? Do you put any stock into that? Or uh, how do you feel about the White Sox heading into this season? I think uh, Jose Abreu leaving is, you know, was inevitable. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the comments he made about just being an organization that appreciates him and being in a winning situation, and you know, I noticed stuff like that. So um, they could they could win a lot of games. They they got some good players, but you know, they've they've underperformed in the past, and wouldn't surprise me if they continue to underperform this season. It's uh, you know, it's a team where veteran players are happy to to walk away from, and that concerns me. Yeah. Two, uh, okay, so two more overs I'll give you quickly here that I bet. Um, I still like them. Pirates over 66 and a half, and uh, the Diamondbacks over 74 and a half. Those are two that I have decent size positions on. Um, I think that we're just a little bit too like that's 66 and a half is incredibly low for the pirates. Uh, this is a team that still has like a decent amount of, of arm talent and they still have, you know, some good players in that lineup. I'm not saying they're going to go out there and win 75, 80 games and like, you know, be in the wild card hunt in like late August still, but like 66 is very low. In my opinion, Mitch Keller finally looks like he's coming around a little bit to the pitcher. We kind of once thought he would be, I like Ronzi Contreras. Um, you know, Brew Baker has, has had a really nice spring. Uh, he's another interesting sort of arm. I mean, you know, is O'Neill Cruz going to take that next step? Uh, McCutcheon, you know, McCutcheon's back. Um, Brian Reynolds is, you know, a really nice player there too. I'm a little bit worried about maybe whether he gets traded or something and that hurts them. But, uh, you know, 66 and a half was just, was just low in my opinion. I took the over there and um, I took the over in Arizona as well, where I think the rotation is the biggest question mark. I really like the lineup. Um, you know, you're injecting Corbin Carroll and Jake McCarthy, the speed that those two guys bring. Ketel Marte's underlying metrics were a lot better than he performed last year. I think that he's going to have a bit of a bounce back. I love Christian Walker. Um, you know, they brought Lourdes Gurriel in. 
Uh, Alec Thomas, another young outfielder. Gabriel Moreno, nice young catcher, makes a lot of contact. I really like him, you know, him and Carson Kelly splitting time behind the plate, good pitch framers. The rotation is what, is, I guess, you know, weighing into this total being a little bit low. But, like, I mean, Bumgarner needs to go. But you could talk about guys like maybe Ryan Nelson, Dre Jameson, Brandon Fat that can come in and contribute in this rotation, you know, maybe bump out guys like Bumgarner, bump out guys like Davies. Um, you know, you still got Zach Allen atop this rotation. You got Merrill Kelly. I think that's a little bit low. It's a tough division, but I, I honestly think the Diamondbacks are going to be even in playoff contention in like mid September. Not sure if they'll quite make it, but I think this is a team with a very high ceiling. I think I like Diamondbacks over. I don't mind that. I don't really love the Pirates. I think uh, at 66, you know, it could more likely to go over than stay under. You don't get a lot of leeway when you're betting an under 66 Mm -hmm. win team. Um, I just don't want to have to follow them. It's more of a situation where if I, if I did like the pirates or I thought they had an edge this season, I'd probably be betting them game to game where they're going to be underdogs constantly. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I'm not going to bet the pirates. I don't, I don't mind the D backs. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, Any other, uh, Futures that sort of stand out to you? Anything, you know, division-wise, World Series, pennant, any of that stuff that you kind of looked at? I bet Trey Turner on my way out of Vegas for MVP, Captain America. Mm -hmm. Um, See his number. He was like 14 to 1 at Circa. So uh, took that down a little bit. I see 11 to 1, 12 to 1, um, some 9 to 1s, lowest I've seen. But uh, his his deal, you know, uh, Bryce Harper is not going to, contribute the entire season and when he does he'll probably be a dh as opposed to an everyday outfielder and you know everyday dhs don't really win <clears throat> mvps so turner has likely taken the mantle as best player on the uh on the phillies for this season so i'm happy happy to take some turner and hope he comes into the season and continues the strong play that we've seen in the the wbc um Otherwise, I'm still kind of formulating my my overall plans and putting together card. I'm actually working on that this week. I hope to get some more bets in. Um, but I really like Turner. I didn't didn't have a you know I had I had some Soto and Acuna thoughts up at the top. I think those guys are mm-hmm. rightfully favorites for MVP. But Trey Turner is just as good, and you know, guy's got a three hundred million dollar contract. He's got to go out there and perform. Yeah. Did you, uh, I saw your tweet about a Rosarena. His, oh uh, yeah. I got some, Rosarena, Did you end up, you got some of that. Yeah. 250, 300. I think there was some 500 at Westgate. I don't know if I was able to get that. I know I got three, um, 253. The deal with the Rosarena, like you just look at, you know, I always sort of, I have like a checklist of, you know, MVP criteria. And one of the, the main ones is, are you the best player on your own team? You might be. I mean, You'd argue Wander Franco, I guess, but you also mentioned Corbin Carroll, and Wander Franco is still like six months younger than Corbin Carroll mm-hmm. in, his, in his third MLB season. So, you know, like if 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 Franco doesn't take the next step this year, that's fine. He's still one of the youngest players in the league. He's got a lot of time, and I see Franco like twenty-five to one for MVP, and I see a Rosarena still over a hundred, and that's just wrong. Like, there's guys at a hundred to one. Like Ty France, Trevor Story, uh, Eloy Jimenez, those yeah, guys no have chance. zero percent chance. Yeah. Like literally zero percent chance. Like Jose Altuve, fifty to one, could give him zero percent chance. You know, like mm-hmm. just just take a, li- a look at the guys on the list and throw away, you know, throw out the guys who have no chance of winning, and then you see. Yo, Rosarena. Oh, he has no chance of winning. Well, why not? He's the best player on his team. He can hit 25 home runs. He can steal 25 bases. You know, is, is it out of the realm of possibility that the Rays win the division? Like, no, they, they do it every once in a while. It's, it's mm-hmm. not crazy. <clears throat> you know, if, if there is a situation where the Rays do win the division, would you rather bet the Rays division price or would you rather have Randy Rosarena at 100 to 1 or 200 to 1 for MVP? You know, knowing that. Uh, the division winning team is likely going to have an MVP candidate on them if they, you know, out, out win their projections by that much. Yeah. I, uh, I think if a Rosa Reina played every game, like it was a 
a World Baseball Classic game or an October playoff game, he would maybe run away with this award. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could even make the case he deserved to win the MVP when he was on the losing World Series team. Yeah, the World 100%. Series MVP. And it's so, I, I haven't seen someone like just that clutch, just every big moment that is presented to him in a big game, he comes up, he comes through time and time again. It's it's like it's honestly insane to watch. He's basically become inevitable at this point. I would like somebody to post a prop. Will the MVP come from the will the MVP have played in the World Baseball Classic? I'm guessing yes. I'm guessing that tonight's game features one, if not both. MVPs for the the regular season and if, if not you know like Randy like I said Randy Randy was just I think a value bet like I mm-hmm. think a lot of things like a, a lot of things have to break right for him to be in the conversation but I mean um, even a guy like I, Acuna like we said right who had a great tournament for Venezuela yeah he's another guy but but I'm 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 predicting that the MVP is playing and playing in tonight tonight's world baseball classic and if not, he took took uh, or he participated in the tournament. All right, fair enough. I think that's a good place to end it. You talked about uh, getting some of your you know your bets in order this week, so we'll uh, we'll reconvene next week before opening day, and we'll do this again, and we'll uh, we'll talk some more futures. But I appreciate you joining me today, and uh, everyone, thanks for watching. Call to the pen. Make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe. We're gonna do a lot more of this stuff throughout the season. We got a lot of exciting baseball content. Uh, coming your way throughout this season, you know, featuring uh, myself, Spreadopedia, uh, John Legaza. It's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and uh, make sure you like the video so that we can help other people find it. Jason, I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Talk to you soon.